All righty. Welcome back, everybody, to the 14th week of our Algorithm Programming course, a Tech Bytes program. Really, Cloudy just said, we're tackling a new programming uh, topic and problem every single week. This week, we're going to keep on continuing on some of the foundation we built last week about a topic we covered. We'll be talking more about that as well. But as always, guys, thank you so much for coming out here today on uh, a Monday where this morning some history was made for some, I know some people here love talking about it. Ingenuity, the Mars rover helicopter did fly up. So that was something. We, we, that's what we keep on reading for um for like three subjects for liter literacy, like literacy yeah. in our day. Like we just study both the rover and Ingenuity. That's awesome that you guys are talking about current events for sure. It was something pretty cool. So now, you guys know how you started off with Chase, the judge. He's going to be ruling on something every single week. That, of course, being quote and meme wars. You guys know who I'm, guys. Right on, Sneaky. I've seen you right, Conan. And my meme is this right here on the right. So the government on the left, is, and you know how coronavirus was going on, the pandemic, you got a quarantine. They're saying, thank you for staying quarantined during the pandemic. As a good citizen, you're like, yeah, yeah. Like, you got to do it, right? But as a programmer, you're like, wait sure but that's all i do you know if you're programming you're quarantined inside of your room you got a hoodie on you got the hood on as well the typical idea you're hacking away you know making whatever you like and it's just funny that you know in the past year you've been told to quarantine stay indoors for the longest periods of time and programmers are like oh hey that's our typical schedule so welcome and uh you can adapt it into your schedule as well now let's see the competition lobby all right, drum roll, please. Okay, so um, my uh, meme is basically a joke, but it's that's terrible. Hip hip, hooray! <laughs> we got two hoods. That's terrible. <laughs> what is that? Oh, All the a pun, I guess. <laughs> Every time I come, we have more reason to kick a lot. Of <laughs> Keep up bringing in the corny. Hey, that, that's actually that's actually funny. Like, that's funny. That's really funny. All right, well, does anybody else have anything to share? Anybody bring anything? I already put mine in the chat, so. Keep a secret, keep it safe enough. We got a looks like a draw from me and Lobby this week. Oof. Unbeatable for three days streak. I'm each going on Team Lobby for the past week. Well, you guys will have more opportunities to see how well we do. Remember tomorrow, uh, as a quick reminder, we have Hack Central. And then on Wednesday, we got project development finishing up our project. So stay tuned for those as well. Wow, Avanish, wow. <laughs> wow, Chase, wow. Okay, I see how it is, guys. Well, I guess I'll have to step my game up for the coming days. Well, as I just said, guys, a quick reminder, we got our course for the month, Algorithm Programming, every Monday throughout this month of April. And uh, we'll keep you guys updated on what goes on for May as well. Finishing up our project this Wednesday and then no video gaming hour this Friday. But then tomorrow, a special thing we do every month, once a month, it's Hack Central. We're going to be doing some cool things with code and seeing how we can play around with shapes. Stay tuned for that. Yep. And today's agenda. Um, we will, number one, review recursion. Whoa. Now, recursion is a- I'm really late, but whatever. Um, we actually, Ayush, we are just going over the agenda for today, so- uh, you're right on time. But yeah, today's agenda, we're going to review recursion, a topic that we introduced last time. But since it's such, an, uh, such a complicated and challenging topic that, I mean, I guess high schoolers and college students often uh, get stuck on, we will review that and do another question on it so we can um, get better at understanding what recursion is. Exactly. So guys, let's start off by just reminding everybody about what is recursion. So I know that we had a couple people last week who were here. Uh, anybody want to share their thoughts before we get into what it is all about? Yep, I've been saying a function inside a function. That's the basic definition about in the programming terms. It's an idea that we can call a function from within that same function. And the reason we do that is to break a large problem into a smaller problem. And in coding terms, like I just said, it's a function literally calling itself. And we'll uh, talk about what makes up this whole thing of recursion as well. Yep. Okay. So um, again, review from last time. So recursion is uh, calling a function inside itself. Um, let me start annotating. 
okay, so we got this this function, right? Um, open parentheses, close parent, or open brackets, close brackets. So inside this function, what is happening? Inside this function, we have this thing, um, this conditional called what is it called, guys? Anyone remember from last time? Or base case. Yeah, perfect. So there's this base case that basically, <laughs> get it? Okay. Basically, you um, look for when you want to stop uh, repeating that this this kind of loop, I guess. And um, this base case is the last time you will iterate through the function. After that, you will stop. Um, and that's why you say if x is equal to zero, then return basically nothing. So you just return uh, no value, which means that after that, you're, you're going to keep returning no value, no value, which doesn't mean anything. So, um, but if, it, if our x is not equal to zero, let's say if it's four or three or two or one, it's going to call this function again. Let, let, it, let me undo so we have a clean board. Okay, we call this function recursion. So that's the function we just created. We call it inside itself. But instead of um, having the same parameter, x, we call it with x minus 1. So what happens if is, um, let's say we call recursion um, 3. All right. Yeah, so uh, I don't know. I, I don't think you guys can see that. But if we call recursion 3, it's going to go through this and then call recursion 2 and then call recursion 1, call recursion 0. And then at that point, what it's going to see is I return nothing. So I return that, and then basically that's it. And that is recursive functions where you go through um, that function a number of times, have a base case, and um, go through loops without using actually loops. Exactly. And we had a question in the chat about asking, what does the term iterate mean? I remember, guys, it's that idea of us moving through something. So in this case, we're talking about moving through the function. Like Labby was saying, we call the function three times if we have, um, we're passing the number three as a parameter. So we're iterating, going through, uh, making a visual mind map as we go along. So now just to recap what Labby was saying, the main parts of a recursive function. Number one, the most important is the base case. This is what makes sure that our program doesn't run an infinite number of times. You know, last week we were doing some fiddling around. We saw that if we did not add a base case, we would get a whole, a lot of red in the output box, right? We had an error of a runtime, meaning that our program was taking way too long to compile. And the reason it didn't compile was because, well, we never had a base case. And then remember, we have the else condition. This is what uh, we're going to call our function again and over again when our base case condition is not met. This is something which we'll be focusing more on today as we go along as well. And yeah, Amelia asking about what is a var. A var number is just a variable. Anything we have to store a value. It's like a box in real life. We store things into a box, right? Well, in programming, we store values and data into a variable. All right. And today's problem, we are going to be doing exponents with recursion. Now, we do have an, uh, an example on board of what an exponent is, but can I anyone like tell us what exponents are verbally? Well, I don't like them at all. They're the worst. Basically, if you put it in four to the power of three, it's basically you have to times four by itself three times. So whatever number is... To it's to the multiply to the power of you have to multiply it by that itself that many times. Perfect. I mean, Chase, you say you do hate them, but you know them perfectly. So I don't know. You may you may start liking them at one point. But yeah, Chase explained it perfectly. Um, you have this base number. If you raise that to an exponent, let's say three, you just have to multiply that base number um, three times. So that number of times that the exponent is. Exactly. And yeah, now we do have some, uh, if we have any OGs here, we do. We did do this problem early on, you know, uh, in when we started algorithmic programming. So think about how we did it then and how we're going to do it today. Don't want to say too much about that, but keep that in mind as well. And as a quick reminder, guys, of what we will need to do this problem. Remember the basics, like we talked about variables to hold our values of our exponent passing parameters, the basic, you know, we already know. We're going to have some parameters since we're going to be utilizing recursion and in that nature as well. 
And functions, of course, because recursion is based off of the idea that you call a function inside that function, we will definitely need to use functions. Now functions is basically you define a function, say def, the name of the function to parentheses, um, do stuff inside that function. And then after that, actually call that function for um, the code inside it to run. And then importantly, we will also have our conditionals, AKA our if else statements to make sure that we are checking for a base case in the scenario of doing exponents with recursion and then also some if else if statements is uh, in order to make sure that when our base case is not met, we also have a backup plan and a way for us to call our function over again. So with all that information down, how about we actually code this? Alrighty, so before we get on started going towards the actual code, let's do a quick little whiteboard session of how we are going to be tackling this problem today. So say we have a problem. So we're going to do three to the fourth. Avanish, quick round. What is that? Um, 51. Uh, no, 71. 81, 81. Yep, so remember it's three times three times uh, three times three. So then we get nine times three, 27 times three, which is 81. So three to the power of four is 81. Alrighty, great, so we got that down. Now we know how to do it by ourselves, but how are we gonna tackle this problem with recursion? And the way we're gonna do that is have a, some type of function, right? A function which will do our exponents. Now in this function, we will have to have two main things. Who can remind me what's the number one main thing we got to look out for? Errors. For sure going to be dealing with some errors, but since we are going to be calling this function eventually, since it's recursive, remember we have two things. We got something which starts with a B. Base case. Yep, so we're gonna have a base case and then we'll have the other statements and other conditions which we're gonna be checking out for. So our base case today, we're actually going to be having three separate base cases when calling our recursive function. And the way that is, is because if you think about it, we can actually do a little example of what those three um, base cases will be. So there'll be three uh, cases essentially. We are going to be passing in two parameters right here. We're gonna pass in the base, which is the three in this case. And then we will be passing in the exponent, which is the four. So we'll have two variables and then say we're passing in three and then four. Now, we are gonna to have to keep track of what is happening to these numbers in order to use recursion and see how we are coming up with the product and eventually getting to our solution of 81. And in order to do that, we're gonna have three base cases and we're gonna treat this first parameter as the letter A and the second parameter as the letter B. And what we're gonna do is say, if the letter, our per first number, AKA our base ever equals zero, that tells me that we've reached the end. Essentially, that means that we don't have to keep on going, decreasing the value of our base because we, that, that would make, uh, you got a question? Huh? You have a question? Yeah. I, I Alrighty, so as you get on back, just gonna finish up that first base case. When we have our base equal to zero, that will tell us that we have to return. Uh, I'm just gonna write R for sure. Let's type that out. We are gonna return the number zero. Now this might be a bit confusing for now, but we'll do an example and see how this actually works going through as well. Now our second base case is not gonna be dealing with the actual base, base, base case we're actually gonna be dealing with the exponent. And then what we're gonna be doing is say whenever our exponent value is eventually equal to one, then we're gonna be have, we're gonna to have to return our actual base, which in this case is three. And then lastly, whenever these two base cases are not met, we're gonna have one final base case, which is gonna say uh, whenever our actual exponent equals zero, we will return the number one. Now, the reason why we are gonna return the number one instead of returning zero or 
our base is because of this. So can anybody tell me if we have three to zero, what does that equal? Three zero. to the power of zero? Zero. Almost, add one chase. One, I thought it would equal zero because zero. So that'll be something I look into. Yeah, so it's a, it's a math property, I guess you can remember it as, but anything raised to the zeroth power is always going to be one. Because if you think about it, right, you're not multiplying it, but the three by itself any number of times. You're just saying, hey, whatever the um, most basic form is, I guess in a sense, that is what it will be. So anything raised, it could be three, it could be 50, it could be 9 million raised to the zeroth power, it will always equal one. And that is why whenever our exponent equals zero, we will be returning one. So now with that in mind, if we do a little example right here, we can move on towards our actual code. So say we, let's clear this out. All right, so let's do it down here. So say we will do two do exponents, call our function, raising it two to the power of three. So now, can anybody tell me what that is before we can get started? Two raised to the power of three? So two times eight. two times two. Yep, good chase. So that is eight. Now in our function, we're gonna be have to pass this in. So the number two will act as our base, the letter A parameter, and then the variable B will be um, the number three, our second parameter we are passing in. Now, when we're gonna pass these numbers in, none of these base cases are gonna be met. Our base of number two is not equal to zero and our exponent value is three. And clearly three is not one and three is not equal to zero. So this is where the second aspect of our recursion function will come in. That of course being our other conditions. And in our other condition, we're only gonna have one other condition. And that other condition will be to call our function again. This is where the actual recursion will be happening. We're gonna call our function again with the same base, but subtracting the exponent by one. And it's that idea of breaking the large problem of two to the power of three into smaller chunks. So breaking it down into two squared, then eventually breaking it down into two to the power of one. So now if we do this multiple times, we start off with two to the power of three. Then when our none of our base cases are met, we will then move on towards calling our function again, but now two to the power of 10. Anybody tell me what will the second parameter be? Two. Yep, so then it will be two. Now our computer is gonna go back looking through our program and see are any of the base cases met. Two is the first parameter, nope. Uh, number two is the second parameter as well, nope, no case in that. So now we're gonna iterate, AKA move through our function again. This time decreasing the exponent by one again. So it'll be two raised to the, yep, Avanish, the first power. Now it's where get, uh, things get interesting because our second parameter actually meets a base case. And in this case, it meets the second base case of our exponent being the number one. And in this case, what happens is that we're gonna have something being returned, that being the number two. And that is perfect because now we're gonna go back towards our second call we made and multiply two against itself again, which gets us four, two times two is four. And then we're gonna finally go back towards our first call we made before we even did any recursion and multiply whatever our product was by two. And four times two gets us our magic solution of eight, which is equal to two to the power of three. So this is one of the ways how one of our base cases will help us in ensuring that we can do an exponent. So with that example down, if anybody does not have any questions, we can move on towards the actual code. There's too much math. <laughs> It'll, you'll see how minimal the code is, but the main idea is just realizing how 
we're breaking a large problem. So even if, you know, let me figure this out. Even if we did 25 to the power of 15, right? This would eventually get broken down into many smaller parts. It would be 25 raised to the 14th, then 25 raised to the 13th. And the goal, Chase, would be to return 25 each time so that we can do 25 times 25, 15 times. Yep, so the main idea um, is just, our goal is to get to that point where we're returning our base eventually. And once we can return our base, we wanna multiply by the base however many times our exponent tells us to. All right, so now let's go on to the code. Brand you sure? Yeah, I got it. Got it. All right, you guys, the link to our code, as always, will be coming in the chat shortly. All right, so hop on. All right, so there's a link to the code, guys. So come on in, and then we can start coding this out. I'm in. Great. <laughs> Alrighty, great to see that we got everybody coming on in. Alrighty, so remember guys, our basic idea is doing recursion. This is our second week and the problem we're gonna be tackling today is doing exponents with recursion. We already talked about how we have three base cases which we'll be utilizing today. Remember the three base cases which we'll be coding out in a little bit as well. So let's get towards doing the first step, that being creating the function. I'm just going to say define our function as do exponents. And then whenever we're doing recursion, we usually pass in something uh, between the parentheses. Can anybody remind us what those are called? Um, I forgot. Well, I, won't, I wasn't here, so. <laughs> That's fine, Amelia. Thank you. Anybody else remember? Starts with a P, ends with an R. I was going to say print. <laughs> that hurt arm. Like, no. Param. Um, Matters. Yep. So we'll pass in our base and then our exponent. Let's say that A is our base and then B represents our exponent. So say we had, um, we're passing in four, three. This means that our base is four and our exponent is. Oh, our exponent is three and our base is four. Alrighty, now towards actually coding out some of the base cases which we discussed on the whiteboard and which the first base case is gonna be if our exponent is ever equal to zero. Does anybody remember if our exponent is equal to zero, anything raised to the zeroth power, we're always gonna return the number So if we have five to the zero or two raised to the zeroth power, anybody remember what we return? Was it zero? Yes, no. So or two one. to the zero always gets us? One. Exactly, so we're gonna be returning the number one. So that's one of our base cases. Now, there are two other base cases which can be satisfied. So now we're gonna have to write an else if statement in Python. Remember, we can do a shortcut for that and say L if, that's how we do it in Python, else if. And now we're gonna do is say, if our base is ever equal to zero, then also return the number one to make sure that we're not multiplying against zero. Because if we multiply against zero, that means that we 
are not going to have a product returned to us. And then lastly, if our base is ever equal to one, we will just return our, uh, our sorry, not our base. If our exponent is ever equal to one, then we will return our base. And this is the best condition to be satisfied because this will return our base. So say we have four to the power of three, whenever our exponent is equal to one, that tells us, hey, return the number four. And that goes up on the chain, multiplies the four by four, the four by four, then multiplies the call before by four as well, eventually getting us our product. If four cubed is 64. Wait, Elif is else plus if, right? Yep, it's literally like okay. if. Because I was confused if that was a variable, but it was kind of like blue color. So it must be like something inside the Python they already put in. Yep, yep. So it's L, L if it equals the shortcut in Python. In other languages, you generally write out else if, but in Python, you can just say L if. And then if none of these conditions are met, then we retract to our basic idea. Else, we are going to have to call the function again, the second most important part about our recursive function. And what we're going to do is call the same base, passing the same base in, but our exponent parameter, we will decrease it by one so that eventually we can get to the base case and have numbers being returned. All righty. So with that in mind, how about we actually call this function, see it go in action. So uh, I will just print out and say print do exponents of, what do you guys want to do? What raised to the what power? Um, I know, um, maybe to the fifth power. All right, what number do you want to raise to the fifth power? Six. Alrighty, so we can do six to the fifth power. Wait, before Let's... we run, um, I I may be wrong, but we did call do exponents a comma b minus one, but um, don't we multiply that times a? Yeah. Because remember when um, Ryan uh, whiteboarded that we we actually have to multiply whatever we get from like calling that function again by a. That's how we get. Uh, six times six times six times six five times. Yeah, exactly. That's a real life. Chase, you called it debugging it earlier. It gives me errors for sure. So that's super important. If we're just going to keep this right now, if I hit run, we're not, we'll see what happens. I think, yeah. Oh, oh. Typing some English. What's, what's happening? It says none if you can see none. I'm not sure where you guys are seeing the Let us know uh, by unmuting. But if I run this without, that um, the multiplying, which Lobby just told me about, we get nothing printed out. And the reason is because I think Replit is smart by not, oh, we're not calling the function, hold up. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, this again. So say we do do exponents six raised to the fifth power. If I hit run, well, we might get an overflow error or we might get, yeah, see the number six return. The reason why we're just having the number six return is we're not multiplying it before it, uh, however many times we want, which is why we're just getting the base. In order to make sure that we're multiplying six by itself five times, we have to do the base, which is the parameter A, times the result of the previous call. I kind of feel like there's a tech bytes curse where we have to have an error in every code we try to do. <laughs> Chase, it's, it's, not, it's not just a tech bytes curse. It's yeah. a programmer's curse. Yeah, it's something you got to get used to doing and tackling in real life. So, uh, so Avanish, that's a good idea, which you have. What Avanish is doing is in Python, if we want to do something raised to the power, so say two raised to the power of three, you do two double multiplication sign. But the way our recursive function works is that we can just multiply by the previous value and have, uh, so say we have our case again, right? We have three raised to the fourth power. We're eventually going to make it down to the base case. We're going to go back up the chain, multiply by three, multiply by three, and then multiply by three once again. If you're that's really... why I don't like it. That's why I don't like. That's why I don't like bonins. Well, we're going to make it sort of easier today by hopefully just finishing it out. But if we were to raise three to the third power, then again to the third power, that would become a much much more bigger number, right? So that's not what we're trying to do. We're just multiplying by each previous time. 
So with that air fixed out, let's hit run and see what we get. Anybody know off the top of their head what is six to the fifth power? Um, I can count. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yes, it's a big number. All righty, well. Let me ask my 7,776. Or we can just ask Avanish. He's a calculator. He's a cyborg. That's why he can, knows how to do it so fast. And let's do six to the fifth power. We indeed get 7,776, just like we were supposed to. We can test it out with any other cases which we'd like. We can do, let's go a bit big. Let's go 60 to the third power. Or let's go 60 to the, let's see how, let's see our bounds. Let's see. Let's go 60 oh. to the third power. power. Wait, can I do it so he can show us the max and then you'll do it until an error pops up or max exceeded? Right, let's try. Let's go 60 to 50th. Let's see how long that takes to run. Oh, that did run. Indeed. Wow. Okay, yeah, stop. it does like up to like 15 or 17. Oh my god. Let's go 500. We got some latency now. We got a delay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> let's go 1,000. Oh, wow. there we go. Maximum depth. You do 999. Will yeah, that yeah. work? Come on. I think the error that it's giving is just the recursion error, not the fact that it, it can't hold that um, that big of a number in a variable. I think it's just detecting that the recursive um, function is going on too many times. Yeah. There's probably a time, uh, probably a, I'm sure, a calculation which is made to stop. Yeah, that's why we're getting their steering right here. So I guess there Whoa! is a type limit. Yeah, to the 98 ninth power, that's a big number as well. I think I have an idea. Yeah. Oop. Wait. I did something wrong. That's fine. A thousand to the thousandth power? I think that's going to be okay, right? That'll probably give us another error, but we can, you know, see what happens. There we go. Yep, another Maximum too many times we're calling the function. We can't do it that many times. Other than that, guys, that wraps up today's recursion problem. Remember, we did do this problem early on in algorithmic programming, but we used a while loop, remember, last time? But this time, we got the job done with Look, the idea of that's recursion. That's a million? Is that a million? Or is that a Google? That's oh, way million. more than a million. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a yeah, lot. Yeah, that's a, definitely a Google. Yeah. So it's a Google Plex. It's a Google Plex, yes. Yeah, so uh, we have seen now how to tackle a problem two different ways. One, with our basic idea of for loops, and now today with recursion and how we can simplify our problems down. This right, just shows how much we have learned. We started with for loops, while loops, and we are all the way here um, learning recursion. So proud of you guys. I just Googled that number. It was actually First like- class. I have no idea, sorry. It said it was like a decillion. The number that came up, it was like a decillion. I, I looked it up. That's a cool name. <laughs> That's all I can say, I guess. Well, all of that, guys, that brings us to the end of this week's algorithm programming course, guys. Remember, hope you guys had a good time. Tomorrow, we'll be having Hack Central. Remember, doing some cool things with shapes and coding. It'll be fun, so come out then. And then Wednesday, yeah. finishing up our project and project development. Any questions? All right, other than that, guys, have a great rest of your day. I'll meet you guys tomorrow. See you guys. Bye. Bye.